Hey everyone, it's Joe Dezayas here from The Automator, and uh, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm also sick, so it may not convey it, but uh, we I was watching some videos this morning, and I saw this thing, and in Isaiah's screen here, you can see that's the video, the thumbnail there. In it, he was showing how basically someone, they were running Python code, but they connected ChatGPT to doing image vision search and clicking on your computer, which is basically what right. we do with AutoHotKey, right? So much of it. So um, I asked Isaiah and Irfan to take a look at it, and they looked at the the code a bit. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you saw there, Isaiah, and let's talk about the potentials and, and where we're going with this, right? Because it's huge. Yes. So it was just a matter of time until somebody um, got the idea of having ChatGPT try to control a computer, and we had a client that actually mentioned something similar to us. He said, oh, I would like to give ChatGPT hands, right? Um Joe and I, we, we understood that this was going to happen at some point, but the speed uh, of how this is happening is extremely fast. Now, in this video, he goes on, if you see the chapters, he goes about the introduction about it, but then he skips, he does a few other topics. So just keep to the next part about how to install it and testing it, especially the testing here is where he shows how this thing worked. But as I was looking at the um, video, he mentioned a GitHub repository. You can see it here. And when I go there, this is what I find. Um, it is Python code, I can tell because of the .py. Um, this is Python code. And I went ahead and took a look at it. I just went ahead and opened this guy. And I just saw what it did, right? And it is a very small script. It's about 600 lines of code. It's not much. so. Don't expect anything too sophisticated here because the purpose of it is not to be extremely, you know, like the best of the best. It's just, I, I would see it as a proof of concept. Party. And what he's doing, right. So what he's doing is he's uh, giving it a prompt that describes what he's going to do, right? Um, and that prompt is going to give it up to chat GPT in which he's telling it that he has four actions that he can do, click, type, or search. And when it finishes, then can reply with the word done. And each of the responses, he is receiving them in a very structured way. He tried to make it structured way and so on and so forth. So now when we look at the, um, at the readme file here, one of the things that you will notice is that it says that it has a very high uh, uh, error rate. So the error rate for estimating the X and Y positions is quite high. Now, that means that a very many times it works just fine because it seems like it is what this is doing is sending an image to GPT Vision and telling ChatGPT, okay, I want to open the browser. And in the image, ChatGPT will um, infer what the browser icon is, and it's going to reply back with how, click on those coordinates. Now, somewhere along the lines of sending the image and chat GPT sending the coordinates back, there seems to be some type of a disconnect, and that's the reason why the error rate is too high. So right now, is just... Other, I wanted to add yeah. to that, because, and I forgot to mention this earlier when we were talking, is you and I know from the stuff we've been doing recently with just like DPI and um, your resolution and all this, there's a, it's it's quite complicated. And so who yes. knows if the coordinates that it's giving back are taking some of these other things into account, right? Yeah. Sadly, what is happening is whatever coordinates ChatGPT is giving um, sometimes do not match what the computer is. And that's the reason why the clicking fails. Um, we don't know if OpenAI is also doing something to prevent that the compute the chat GPT gives you a correct answer, which I really doubt, but that might be something. Um, as soon as I, you know, entered here, I look at the code, I saw how it is, I saw what it's doing. Then I went to the issues part. So there's 14 issues reported for now. This is a this is code that was actually released two weeks ago. So in two weeks, a lot of people have been watching the thing, forking it to try to make it work for them, 1,900 stars. So a lot of people are quite interested in this project. And 
we have already 14 issues reported. Uh, some of them are very complicated to resolve. Like, hey, it keeps saying that uh, I'm sorry, but I cannot assist with that request. So as I'm saying, you're make you're, you're asking something to ChatGPT. She's replying back. She's supposed to be replying in a certain way, but ChatGPT is totally ignoring that and just replying, I'm sorry, but I cannot assist with that request. I don't know what this is. This was opened only one hour ago, so this is totally new. I don't know if everybody's going to have the same issue um, or if it is just that one guy. We will see. But this is the main problem. A lot of people do uh, report that the clicking is always off. So whatever the coordinates ChatGPT is giving you um, is not, it seems to be that it's not matching the computer. So while this is a very good example of where we're going with ChatGPT and what the future awaits, I actually look at it as to the point where I'm going to be able to do Windows H to, to go ahead and open the speech services and um, talking, just by talking, and that the computer will go ahead and perform the actions that I want. So I just go ahead and open the Windows H and say, hey, open my, my, my PC and go to the D drive. And it would just go ahead and do that. I think that is not crazy to think about at this point in time, because now we have all of the parts of it almost working in a way. The only thing that we need to do is synchronize all the parts. We have the um, LLM, which is just what interprets whatever you typed. We have the computer vision. Uh, we soon have a way to tell uh, um, ChatGPT which functions are available. But even without that, I can just tell her to answer me in a specific way. And I just grab what she replies with and translate it to code. All of those things are getting closer and closer into a point in which we just talk to the computer and it would just go ahead and do whatever we told it to do, which is extremely interesting. Yeah. And, and this is, again, it's just a starting point where it's really awesome to see it, but we both know there's far better, more accurate ways, even if you're using AI for doing stuff for automating programs, right. And, and this one's using image search because Hey, it's easy, right. We've always said that image search is easy. It just, it's just also unreliable and you have a lot of problems. It's, I think, unreliable in this instance for different reasons. <laughs> right. from, but imagine, like, if it was, if it could detect, hey, you know, go do this in Excel. With Excel, you have Calm. And if it understands it's Excel, it could actually send, you know, Calm or VBA or something to Excel and perform it much more accurately and faster, far faster than if you're doing image clicking, mouse clicking, right? Like, that's that is true. So, uh, this is just the beginnings of it to me because there's so many. We know of 19 ways in auto hockey to automate to connect to programs and automate them. Two of which are like the sending of mouse clicks and keystrokes, right? Like that's very little. There's so many other ways that are far more reliable and consistent. Um, and of course, it's just going it, to, it, we'll have to wait for them to, to be available, but we're already going. This is really cool that people are going to be able to automate their programs and their computer. It's funny that you mentioned that, you know image search is not as reliable. Even in this particular um, uh, GitHub repository, he has a, a, a note at the end. Let me show you. Let me share my screen once more. And he he says, additional thoughts. We recognize that some oper operating system functions might may be more efficiently executed with hotkeys, such as entering the browser address using command L. So that's the control L. So, so they know. Yeah. They just, as you just mentioned, they just started with something that is a little bit simpler. Grab this image, try to figure it out, and go ahead and do it. Well, the nice, because so, the nice thing with images is that it'll work as long as it, you're expecting a human to do it, because it's how humans do things, right? As we look right, at but it's yes, hard. that's right, right. Not every program but, has a hotkey for taking the action that you want, right? So that's why if you went that route, you'd be very limited. Yes, that is that is correct. And then that to your point, the person that created these. It's not really unaware that those things are there. It's just that they made the decision of starting with something that is a little bit, it's a starting point. And I think this thing is going to become better over time. You have always said this, this is the worst that it will ever be, right? So this is the worst that it will ever be. And just, if you look at the video, when he was going ahead and doing the, the browser, he was just telling it, 
uh, go to this subreddit, grab all the titles and send me an email. Yeah. It did that in an amazing, well, an amazing speed without breaking. I was like, holy crap. He distinguished it too, is if you used the Chrome plugin, that's because it's, you know, it's kind of bound to Chrome at that point. It did far better at triggering things from your browser than using just the general one where he wasn't using the Chrome plugin. Um, which which basically um, then triggered the idea I told you to, like, holy crap, what if ChatGPT could control UIA? What, what is happening is the browser has a DOM, right? And the DOM can be accessed in many ways, but it's a very structured way of looking at a web page. And the reason why ChatGPT is better at that is because when you, when with the plugin, it seems to be that it's passing along the DOM, and now ChatGPT knows where it has to click because it sees it in the text. Right. Well, just imagine that I could pass the UIA tree, which is also a very structured way of looking at a window or a program. And if we can pass that information along, I would guarantee ChatGPT would be way more accurate. Uh, it's just that we're not there yet. <laughs> yep. Good things to come, though. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, like the video if you learned something. And I hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye.